Creative Guide 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Hello, everyone. Thank you for spending some time with us today. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90. Sitting in her supervisor's chair is Myra. Hello, everyone. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of amazing that the weeks we've had here the last couple of weeks, getting ready for everything that's going on and uh, talking to people all over the world. And uh, before I get into that, though, <laughs> I want to remind everybody, if you haven't visited Give God 90 lately, go ahead and do so. There's going to be some interesting things coming up there when I get a chance to uh, not be conversing with people all over the world and get to uh, update the website. Um don't forget, uh, by the way, that's givegod90.com. Uh, books are out. More on that uh, in a little while. <clears throat> if you like what you're hearing, don't be afraid to hit those share buttons and the like buttons. Uh, subscribe to whatever platform you're using. And uh, if you want to leave us a comment, there's lots of ways to do that, and we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. There's some good news uh, I want to uh, share with you today. Um, last week, yeah, last week, I, uh, actually had the opportunity to speak to a fellowship of believers in Pakistan, uh, via Zoom. Um, I didn't actually physically go there, but through the wonders of technology, I was there and I have been asked back. Uh, apparently they liked what I had to say and we appreciate them so much for inviting me and for being who they are. Uh, the world is actually a very hungry place right now for the sacred word of the Creator. People have heard, and I'm going to go here, all right? They, they've they heard the empty voices that come from so many church pulpits, and they want some type of assurance that the Creator's in control, and I get that. <clears throat> um. This week, I'm able to say that a fellowship in, in Kenya has asked to join with Give God 90 uh, so their people can hear the truth, the, the truth that was once delivered to the saints, by the way. Uh, they want to partner with us and have invited us to uh, uh, speak there uh, through the wonders of technology, <laughs> and that allows us to connect all around the world. Uh, and, and also, they, they want to be part of what we're doing, and that is... You know, teaching people to live the way we are designed to live. And we do these things a lot like you're listening to this podcast, and we, we thank the ones who have made that possible. Uh, we're pleased, very pleased, to welcome the people from Kenya and pray that that union will be helpful and beneficial to the people there. Um, most of you know, if you've been listening to us for a while, you know, we, we try to take the... the biblical principles and, and, and give you ways to apply those things to your life. Um, and, and that takes something more valuable than money sometimes. It takes time. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask you for just a portion of your time this week, not very much, uh, but if you would add uh, these things to your prayer list, we would appreciate it. Special prayers for the people in in. Kenya and all around the world who are desperately seeking the face of the Creator. You know, we would we would really appreciate that. By the way, if you're led to help in another way, <clears throat> that would be great also. I've been in contact with people uh, in other countries as well. Now, I, I try to weed out the ones who are, um, you know, the scam artists, Oh, well, send me money so I can help this group. Send me money so I can help that group. We try to weed through those. Um, and and even, even the people who are in desperate need, they realize these people are out there scamming. Uh, and in one person in particular, you know, he's so willing, he says, don't send me money. I am willing to send you the clothing sizes for the children if you're so lead, you know, send me the clothes. I'll make sure the kids get them. I'll send you the sizes they need if, if that's more convenient. Now, if you are led to help all, or to offer some help with that, 
Um, I can put you in contact with these folks, or you know, if if you choose to remain anonymous, um, you can do that too. You know, we'll we'll get it together and get that stuff there to them some way. Um, of course, you know, if you want to take the convenient road, that's fine too. There's a support button on Give God Ninety. If you want to use that, that's fine. We will get this. You know, just you know, when you put in there. Uh, just put in the notes what it's for, and we'll get that to the folks. <clears throat> um, I, I'm going to add something here. You know, I've always said you should be personally involved, and I understand a lot of people aren't comfortable with that. Um, so if you if you choose to remain anonymous, you can do that. Uh, if you want to use us as that conduit for your giving, that's that's fine. We will do that. We'll take care of it. Uh, I hope you, if you've been listening for a while, you know that. Uh, unless I have two people that say, "Yeah, you can you can give this to this person," or you can give this person my information, then we will. But I don't think I've ever said anything uh, that relates to who anybody is, I guess is a good way to say that. You know, I, I, I try to be very generic in this kind of thing because I know a lot of people do take this very seriously. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and start on what I really want to talk about today. <laughs> and, and some of you have heard me say before that the Bible in its original language and its original context, is agonizingly specific. Um, to some, that might sound as if the Bible is agonizing. <laughs> and, you know, let, let's face it, some of the words in there, especially the names of people and places, you know, you can agonize over a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Part where so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat. Yeah, so-and-so. all those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, to some people, though, the Bible really is agonizing because it is the sacred word of the Creator. It's what he had the writers write the way he had them write it. Now, listen carefully to some of David's words, though, and this may seem a little odd place to go for where I'm actually going to wind up tonight. But listen to what David had to say here. Go ahead and read that portion. See my suffering and save me, because I have not forgotten your teachings. Argue my case and save me. Let me live by your promises. Wicked people are far from being saved because they do not want to obey your demands. Lord, you are very kind. Give me life by your laws. Many enemies are after me. But I have not rejected your rules. I see those traitors and I hate them because they do not obey what you say. See how I love your orders, Lord. Give me life by your love. Your words are true from the start and all your laws will be fair forever. Psalms 119 verses 153 through 160. The people who reject the Creator and His law, His instructions are the ones who agonize over the details. But why? Why do believers even argue with the secular world? Why do, and again, this is generic, self-proclaimed atheists insist on using the Bible in their rhetoric because they know what David wrote is fact and it cannot be changed. Your words are true from the start. Quite literally, in Hebrew, it reads, The source of your word is truth. Let me say that again. If you look at it in Hebrew, it's going to read, The source of your word is truth. That cannot be debated. It's right there in plain Hebrew. Read it for yourself. So look, let's look, well, at a source, right? Genesis 1.1. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. Bereshit. 
it indicates that at a time that our Creator considers perfect to do so, He chose to create first the heavens, not our starry sky that came later, okay? Um, this refers to the heavenly realm that was created first. We're not told how much time elapsed between the creation of heaven and the six days He created our universe, because we don't need to know. You know. We simply know because the Bible is so specific that the heavenly realm was created first and then the universe we live in. That in itself causes great agony among the secular world. That's how they try to fit in the billions and millions of years of evolution, along with some other things. You know, I was going to say... Uh, is misunderstood, maybe misunderstood passages, but they're not misunderstood. Let me be specific here. They have been corrupted, and they've been corrupted on purpose. Any, <coughs> excuse me, any word, any word study uh, worthwhile is done one word at a time, and I could spend a long time uh, on in the beginning, but I've done that before. And it, it boils down to at the time our Creator considered perfect, He began to create. We don't know how He created the heavenly realm. That part's not recorded. But we do know that when He created our universe, He spoke. And to speak is to release breath, to release spirit. The air we breathe today contains the spirit or the breath of our Creator. But since the serpent spoke to Eve, that spirit or breath has been polluted. And that evil, in a sense, rides on the breath of our Creator. Because we breathe that in, we are responsible for keeping the Spirit of God in and allowing the evil pollution out. It's kind of like when you eat fish, right? You swallow the meat, you spit out the bones. Now, some might be wondering, how do we separate the evil pollution once we breathe it in? After all, we, we breathe without thinking about it, don't we? When we live the way we are designed to live, the pollution has nothing to stay for. It can't live in an, envir in an environment that it finds offensive. You know, it's much like what we eat, not to be gross here, but no matter how much good food we eat or how much good water we drink, there's always going to be a portion that we eliminate from our bodies. And this is actually part of the result of the cursed world we live in. But let's back up just a little bit. The Hebrew word for spirit is the same word for moving air or breath. It's the ruach. When I wrote Inheriting Lies, I asked the question, can the spirit of our Creator exist before He speaks? If, if spirit is breath or moving air, can it exist before the Creator speaks? That's very important to understand. That is how specific the Bible is. Before God spoke creation into existence, His Spirit in our universe could not be because Spirit is moving air or breath. Now, I know somebody out there right now is screaming at the top of their lungs, right? But God is Spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and truth. Stop trying to limit your Creator. If you think that God is nothing more than Spirit, it's like saying He's nothing more than a puff of air. Did you ever think about that? If you understand, if you know what Spirit is, if you know the, the real context, if you know the real language, and you say that God is nothing more than Spirit, you're saying God is nothing more than a puff of air. It's that simple. Stop limiting your Creator. 
I can tell you because I've read it, okay? <laughs> I can tell you that, it, yeah, it was a puff of air that hovered over the water in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. But the source, the source that spoke that spirit, that created that puff of air, is much, much more and much greater than that puff of air is. And yeah, I get a little testy when I hear people use words they don't know the meaning of. I, I get a little testy when I hear people try to make themselves sound biblical you know, because they, they have a few verses memorized. The reality is that's ignorance. And it will make itself known. It will be exposed. The Bible is so specific in the original, we don't need to interpretate what it says. We simply have to translate it properly. Sometimes that's done well, sometimes it's not. It depends on which translation of the Bible you're using. In the first verse, in the very first verse, we know the when, the who, and the order of what happened. And the rest of Genesis chapter 1 is a chronological sequence of events. Now, if you're still getting stuck on time, remember that the way we measure time is measured by creation itself. The sun, the moon, and the movements of the celestial bodies give us time in our universe. You know, even when Gabriel tells Daniel, I was held back for 21 days, he was using time relevant to our universe. Einstein realized that time was relevant to where you are in the universe as well. A lot of people don't know this, but if you synchronize two clocks next to each other, the farther you move them apart, the farther the distance is between them, the more difference in time there is between the two. That's kind of a, a scientific concept to grasp, isn't it? It is. But it's true. <clears throat> and, and it's really what makes measuring the speed of light practically impossible with the technology we have today. Now, we can't measure light in a one-way path because of the dis difference in time. We can only measure light as a reflection. Does it, you know, does light travel faster, you know, one way than it does coming back from the reflection? Does it take time in the reflection to move? Does it have to stop and then come back? These are things that <laughs> these are things that astrophysicists have to deal with. Thankfully, I'm not one, you know, because that gets into rocket science, and, and I don't deal in rocket science. I deal in, in Bible. But these are the things that we have to understand. Does time, time travel faster going out than it does coming back? Is there a delay in the reflection? We don't know. We have, and even with all the technology we have today, there are some things we simply don't know. Now, are we talking about milliseconds? Yeah, we are. But over 6,000 years and over the expanse of the universe, it makes a difference. A, a couple of verses uh, that indicate that time as we know it has no bearing in heaven has, has led to a convoluted concept that somehow time in heaven is standardized to our time in some weird synchronous day to a thousand year ratio when that's not the context of what the writers were writing. They were simply expressing time in the presence of the creator seems meaningless. After all, think about this. If the divine beings had the ability to travel through time, that means the devil and the demons can too. Okay? If that's possible, why not go back through time and just try again? Why not jump forward and change the outcome? Have you ever thought about that? 
<clears throat> excuse me, I ran a, across a post the other day. It had some pictures of a camera and a compass and some other things on it. And, and it read that these are all instruments that prove the earth is flat. Well, I'm sorry to bust your bubble on this. But these things are all instruments that prove how large the earth really is. You're speaking with people all over the world. A lot of them ask, what time is it where you are? <laughs> and they're amazed, you know, when it's, it can be, you know, bedtime where they are. And, and my day is just starting. And the other way around, too. Our creator didn't design a small world. He created a, a absolutely huge world. One that should demonstrate how majestic he really is. But instead, there are people who agonize over twisted and corrupted scripture because they don't believe it is and can be as specific as it is. The Bible, in its original language and context, is agonizingly specific. There's no way that you can twist it in its original language and its original context. It's that specific. In the beginning, God, he did something. He created his heavenly realm, and then he chose to create the universe we live in. Now, we're told in great detail and in very specific manner about our universe because we live here. You know, this world was actually made for man. That, by the way, for keeping scores in uh, Isaiah 45, 12. You can believe the Bible because it is the sacred word of our Creator. And the source is truth. The source is truth. I can't say that with enough emphasis. I can't say that enough or with enough emphasis. You can believe the Bible because it is the sacred word of our Creator. Um, I, I want to remind everyone that for the month of November, $5 of every copy of Inheriting Lies will be used to purchase Bibles for the folks who uh, don't have access to one. So uh, go ahead and uh, you know get your copies soon. <laughs> get one for you. Get one for a friend. Get one for your pastor. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and I'm not bragging, even though I wrote it. If your pastor would have had this book sitting on his desk when he was in Bible college or he was in seminary, the world we live in today might be just a little bit different because hopefully uh, it would take him away from all of the lies and display for him the truth that comes from the source, our creator. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, Did stop. Did everyone a good night? <laughs> yes, I am. Good day, I mean. <laughs> We will be back Thursday. Oh, by the way, we're not live yet. They are making progress on, on the problem, but uh, they still don't have all of the kinks out. I tried it earlier today, and it didn't work. So uh, we'll be recording these for probably another week or so anyway. But until Thursday evening, everyone, we wish you many, many blessings. <laughs>